This is a basic introduction to angular momentum. Recall that in linear coordinates, Newton's second law states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net outside force acting on the object and inversely proportional to its mass. In symbolic form, this was written as F equals MA. Acceleration can be written as the change in velocity divided by change in time. This can be rewritten as the change in the quantity mv over the change in time. We referred to the quantity mv as momentum and gave it the symbol lowercase p. Hence, Newton's second law was rewritten as F net equals delta P over delta T. We know that each of the quantities has an angular equivalent. The angular equivalent of F equals MA is tau net equals i alpha. The net outside torque on an object is equal to its moment of inertia times its angular acceleration. Angular acceleration can be rewritten as the change in angular velocity divided by the change in time. Hence, we can rewrite the equation as the change in the quantity i omega over change in time. We call this quantity angular momentum. It is designated by capital letter L. Hence, Newton's second law in angular quantities can be rewritten as tau net equals delta L over delta T. Angular momentum is also a vector, hence direction matters. Its units will be kilograms times meter squared per second. Like its linear cousin, angular momentum is also most powerfully used in a law called conservation of angular momentum. Conservation of angular momentum states that if the net outside torque is zero, then the angular momentum is conserved. This can, of course, be generalized for systems of objects where if 
the net torque on the system is zero, then the total angular momentum of the system is conserved. Let us get back to a single object. When conservation of angular momentum applies, then the quantity I omega must remain constant. This means there is an inverse relationship between moment of inertia and angular velocity. If the moment of inertia increases, angular velocity decreases. If the moment of inertia decreases, angular velocity increases. As a real-life example, you can think of the spinning of a figure skater. A figure skater often starts their spin with their arms and often legs extended. She then draws her arms and legs in and her spin rate will increase accordingly. She can then extend her arms and legs back out to slow her spin. Here is a simple problem demonstrating the conservation of angular momentum. We have a satellite that is approximated as a long thin rod rotating about its center that then extends its solar panels and we want to know how this will affect its rotation. We start by reading the problem, looking for clues on mass, shape, radius, and angular velocity. We also take note of what is the quantity being asked for, as well as hence whether conservation of angular momentum is applicable. When the law is applicable, we write out the basic equation of I omega being conserved. We insert the expression for moment of inertia, checking that mass and the shape remain the same. We simplify the expression, solve for the unknown, and plug in. As always, we finish by rereading the problem and checking that we have considered all quantities and answered the question.